Uh, let's just uh, yeah, it doesn't really. I guess it doesn't really matter about placing just yet. But let's just uh, go with this example. Let's just say you only wanted names in this first div, but you wanted places in this second div. The accept options uh, basically allows you to only allow specific groups of objects, so by class, to be dropped into particular elements. So we're going to be using the example that only these two names are going to be allowed to drop, be dropped into here, but London, the place, is not going to be allowed to drop into here. So uh, let's go ahead and change around our code. Um, inside here, I'm essentially just going to allow uh, both to be draggable, so both of our uh, class names, so name and place to be draggable. So we say name, comma, and then place. So now that we have name and place draggable, these are both draggable. And London is also draggable as well, that's the place. So uh, we've got name and place that are both draggable. Containment uh, is within the document, and they both revert back to their original position. So now that we've done this, uh, we've made our drop area, which is a div, droppable. However, now we can uh, uh, specify which uh, class we want to accept. So I'm going to choose to only accept class name. So now that that's happened, um, we can um, go ahead and test uh, this out. Now when I drop, uh, drag London over here, you'll see that nothing happens. Um, however, when I go ahead and drag Oh no, that's not worked. It is dot name. When I drag London over, nothing happens. When I drag Billy over, which is a name, we get this border. So that's allowed the drag or allowed the drop. Uh, so London doesn't change the outside because remember we specified the hover class here. Uh, because this only accepts name, uh, none of these will be valid. Uh, well, this one. Uh, at least won't be valid. Uh, the tolerance will still be valid, but hover class will only uh, add this class in when it's accepted uh, a specific class. So now that we've got that, you can start to see the use of it. For example, if you didn't want uh, places, a list of places to be dragged into here, uh, they're not allowed to be dragged, but names are allowed to be dragged. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the events that we can apply to this to actually make more use out of it. Now we're not actually gonna be creating a, a list type Dropbox. Uh, essentially what you could do with this is when you dragged Alex over and released, you could add that name to this box and the same with Billy, you could then add that under Alex. Uh, again, London wouldn't allow you to drop it so that would be the point of the application. However, you'll find this tutorial in the example tutorials in this series. So you'll be able to actually create a draggable and droppable list application. But for now, we're gonna be looking at events, so at least we know how to handle specific events. So I'm gonna create a comma after here and come down a few lines, and I'm going to create an over event. And this is going to be a function. I'm then going to comma, and I'm going to come down and create an out event, and that's function again. And again, just keep comma separating, and the last event we're gonna take a look at is drop. And again, that is a function. So pull that down there, pull this up just to tidy it, and we can indent these. So hopefully that doesn't look too messy and it makes sense to you. Uh, the over function is basically what's gonna happen when something hovers over. The out function is going to is what's going to happen when we've hovered something over and then we take it out again. And the drop function is going to be when we actually release something inside of this box. So we're going to change some text inside of this box depending on whether we've hovered over, taken an element back out of the box, or when we've dropped an element inside of the box. So over, all we really want to do is uh, add some text to our drop um, I'll drop div. So I'm going to add the text uh, something has hovered over me. So now when we hover something over, we get this text inside something has hovered over me. Um, when we take it out, nothing happens, it just remains as this text here. Uh, let's just go ahead and give this some padding so it looks a bit better. So when we hover that over, something has hovered over me, that's fair enough. Now what we want to do is go ahead and specify what happens when we drag a particular element out. So we again use a selector to select a drop and we apply the text something um, ha 
has been dragged out. And when we refresh, we can drag something in. When we drag it out, it changes to something has been dragged out. So now the last thing uh, is the uh, actual drop of it. So we again use the selector to select the drop div. And inside the text, something has dropped. Now uh, we'll just put something dropped. That'll do. Okay, so let's hover over. Something has hovered over me. We can hover back out, drag back in. So these work sort of in sequence with other. When we let go, it says something dropped. The same with Billy and London doesn't do it because it hasn't got the uh, acceptance to be dropped in. So we can't actually hover this over and let go. So these two elements work because we've applied the accept option and we've created these three uh, events that handle uh, the dragging of the hovering of something over, something being dragged out or, or something that is hovering being taken out of this particular div. And then we've uh, applied uh, an event to see when something has actually dropped inside. So now that you have the fundamentals of dropping, you droppable, you can go ahead and look at the um, the jQuery UI documentation and actually take a look at some of the other options. However, these should be enough to allow you to drop things into them, uh, form lists based on things that have dropped, etc., uh, etc. Et so that's the droppable interaction in jQuery UI.